about five years ago when I was starting up with my smart home slash home assistant experience, one of the hottest things that everybody was talking about was Broadlink infrared hubs. People were using it to control their TVs, ACs, etc. or anything that can be controlled via the ER. And I really wasn't sure why there was such a big hype on it, because all those devices or all those Broadlink devices required external power. Don't get me wrong, while the devices themselves may be nice, but having the device in the middle of the living room on a coffee table pointing towards the AC or TV was something that my wife was really not looking forward to have their sitting. So I never went that route. But today we will be looking at something completely different. And it's not the large, it's something that would make even Paul Hibbert's head explode. Today we'll be looking at a Zigbee battery-powered infrared controller that you can hook up in your home assistant. Let me first start by saying that the link to this device or where I bought it and it was on AliExpress will be down in the video description. So if you want to get one or ten of those devices, Go to the link below, click it and buy. And yes, the link will be probably affiliated link, meaning that if you buy a device through that link, I will get a small percentage out of the sale, you will pay still the same price, and then I can use that money to buy some additional junk. Who knows, maybe Infrared Hub 2.0. As I mentioned, this device was bought on the AliExpress. The current price is 16 euros and 40 cents but the price I paid was 14 euros and 95 cents. I think it was somewhere at the beginning of August while well, I was still on my vacation, once again reading books, then browsing the Aliexpress, then spending the money like there is no tomorrow. So tomorrow or today, we'll be looking at what did I get. The device size is 68 by 68 by 27 millimeters. So it's like this big. You do receive two AAA batteries, that you can install inside the device and you have everything you need to run this device, either by using Tuya Smart Life app or inside Home Assistant, but only if you are using Zigbee to MQTT. We'll talk about that just in a little bit. The device has both transmitter and the receiver. The receiver is used to learn the ER codes. When I was researching the device after I got it, I found out that there are a couple of potential issues, so if you do get in one of the issues, Try correcting it with one of the solutions. First off, some people have no issue with the device itself learning the codes, but unfortunately it cannot repeat them. The problem was for those people that the transmitter part of the device was broken. The second issue is that people were using the device and sometimes it would send the code or device would react, for example TV would turn on or off, but the other times it did not. The problem is the quality of the battery. Who knows how long those batteries have been sitting around, so try replacing those AAA batteries and see if you get any luck with that. Those are two solutions for the two most common problems. I myself had no issues so far with the device. The device doesn't have a single button on it except the pairing button that is located when you pop up the battery lid. If you need to pair the device, you just press and hold that button for 5 seconds, the blue, very faint blue LED will start to blink on the front, and after the device has been successfully added, the blinking will stop. If you are not interested inside Home Assistant and you are using Tuya Smart Life app, which is ok, I don't recommend it as much as I would Home Assistant, but it's your choice, you can of course leverage there the integrations with the Amazon Smart Speaker. This device also does require you to have Tuya Zigbee Hub, because this is a Zigbee device. And also this device will not be able to control any RF devices, so if you are looking for the infrared plus RF hub, this one will not do. But as I said, I was looking for battery powered Zigbee infrared transmitter, and really it does what it needs to do. So let's check Tuya Smart Life app. As with any Tuya Smart Life app, for the pairing purposes, you go into your hub, click on add additional sub devices or something similar, press and hold the button inside the battery compartment to start the pairing process on the Zigbee ER transmitter, and in a couple of seconds you should see notification that the device itself was added. You now need to add devices. 
while it does have extended database, you still need to go through the database, find the type of device, for example, TV, find the manufacturer, for example, ILG, and then find the model by going through all of the possible options for power on and power off. The other option is to create a custom device, and that also you can do by selecting device type, for example, AC, selecting brand of the AC manufacturers, for example, Mitsubishi, and then either go through the list of known devices or try to create custom remote for your specific device. And that's it. If you've now added TV remote, you can control your TV via this box from within the Smart Life app. But now let's talk about Home Assistant integration. As always, I tested this device with both ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT. If you use ZHA, the pairing process is same as for any Zigbee device. Inside the integrations page, you go to ZHA, click on devices, click on add new device, start the pairing process. I had to start the pairing process on the device two times for it to be finally registered with the ZHA. But it was registered wrong. The only thing I could do there is flip the switch, turn it on and off. And actually that switch did nothing. At first I thought that turning the switch on will put device in the learning mode. But even if it did, the LED on device never did start to shine and I did press a couple of buttons on the remote, but I couldn't get any state back inside Home Assistant. That means no, currently device is not supported with the ZHA. To be honest, this was not a big issue for me, but I know that a lot of you are already fully committed to ZHA, so you have to poke the devs to see if this device can be added. I didn't try because I myself am not committed to ZHA. Not yet. I'm testing it, but yeah. But on the other hand, if you are committed to Zigbee to MQTT, you are good to go. Click on Permit Join, click and hold the pairing button on the device itself, and after it starts blinking, the device should be recognized and added to Home Assistant. As you can see, the device is recognized inside Zigbee to MQTT as UF4R11 by Mos, which it really is. And as for the exposed entities, we have state, learned infrared code, infrared code to send, battery status, voltage, and the link quality. We actually are only interested in the state and the learned ER code. If on the state you click on and then use your remote to transmit the ER code, it will be detected and you will see it as a learned ER code. This code here. What I recommend is for you to create a notepad or similar file where you copy and paste all those codes. For example, this code that you see here is a power on off button on my TV remote. But note, this is the current code. If I click on again, once again click on remote, the code is different. Third time, once again the code is different. Pick any one of them at least that is what is working for me. Copy it, save it inside the notepad, then repeat the process. Click on on. Now, for example, use volume up. Copy this string, paste it inside notepad, and so on and so on until you pick up all the codes that you want to have for your TV. As I said, this all depends on what type of device you want to control. This was for my TV. If I do the same process, for my AC, well, check this out. I click on on, I click on power button. This time it did work, but what I usually got is an error. Copy it once again. Then for the AC on, I get unexpected ER code position. But yeah, go through the device that you want to add, try to add all the ER codes. If you do receive an error message, still try to recall that string. And then the question is, how do you transmit that code from inside your home assistant? Well, let's check that one out. My device is called ER Blaster, and this is something that we will need later on, so remember your device name. Go to Developer Tools for now. Later on, you can do the same thing and we will repair the same thing inside Automations, but for now, let's test everything with the service calls. Go to Services, type in MQTT, Publish, and then we can type in the topic and the payload. For the topic, we need to use the following string, Zigbee to MQTT. This is default name of the Zigbee to MQTT topic. If you've changed something, you need to adapt it to the change you made. 
then you need to write in the name of the device. My is ER space blaster. You see the issue with naming your devices with a space. This will work, but it would be better if I would be using name without a space in between, either using no space at all or underscore instead of space. And then set. The topic is now set. For the payload, we need to type in following. Open the curly bracket, double quote, ER, code to send, open quote once again, and then paste the code itself. I will paste here the AC code that I actually do not know if it will work or not. Close the quotes and close the curly bracket. Quality of service will be zero and the retain message will not be enabled. And when you've pasted the code for, in this case, AC, click on call service. Just make sure that you do not have any typos like I did for ZigBee to MQTT, the name of the device and then the set topic. Did you hear it? My AC just turned on. Remember one thing, depending on the type of AC device you have and the remote your AC is using, it should be sending all the variables or configuration parameters from the remote to the AC, meaning that this ER code already includes turn on the device, set it to the cooling mode, set the fins to move up and down, set it to temperature I desired and set the vent speed to auto. So all those commands are already included in the ER code. And if we replace this code with the code I captured for the AC off, call the service, we hear the ping. Of course, the same service call can be used for the TV. You just replace this code here with the code that you captured to turn the TV on, off, which is awesome because TV remotes usually have one single button and it's used to toggle the state, so the same command is turning it on or off, which is nice for the automations. And then, of course, with the same ER blaster, you can control, for example, volume level, channel, etc. Now let's look at a couple of examples for using this ER blaster inside your automations. I've created two automations. One will be triggering the AC to turn off when the door or window is open, and the other one will be triggering it back on when I close the window or the door. Let's look at first this one, AC off, door is open. For the trigger, I'm using this door window sensor, called here fake door, that will be triggered when the device is opened. And when the device is opened, I call a service MQTT publish with the topic zigbee2mqtt slash ER blaster. This is the name of the device as I've given it inside zigbee2mqtt and then set. For the payload, once again, we are using curly brackets. Inside we have inside quotes ER code to send and then the actual ER code that we recorded previously. Once again, quality of service is at zero and I'm not retaining the messages. The next automation is quite opposite. When the fake door is closed, device trigger, trigger is fake door, door closed. We call service, MQTT publish, same topic, zigbee to MQTT, then the name of the device, then set. And for the ER code to send, we are sending the command to turn the AC on. And to see how it looks, the door is now open. When I close it, it should start the AC. Since this plug is not hooked up directly to this system, it takes a bit for the command to update, but you should hear the beep. The AC did turn on. We should see now increase in the power usage for this Shelly Smart plug. When I open the door or window and the AC is on, the AC will turn off because we do not want to waste the energy. And the power usage will slowly drop. Actually, it is dropping fast, but this device is not updated in this instance of Home Assistant. It just takes a little bit longer. There are also additional cases for this device. For that, you can use scripts to create custom commands to control your TV and then create a UI where you have power on buttons, etc., to control it via the UI. Or, on the other hand, you can have automations that would be triggered, for example, if somebody is watching TV for too long or if there is nobody at home, just turn the TV off or vice versa. If there is nobody at home and there hasn't been anybody at home for 24 hours, do some kind of routine. Turn the TV on, leave it on for half an hour, then turn it off. It's all up to you and your use cases. What are my final thoughts about this device? 
Well, actually, I was quite surprised with what I was able to do with it. It can replace the remotes inside my home. Will it replace? I'm not sure. I will probably hook this up with my AC and TV and play a little bit more. I know a couple of scenarios for me that I can use when I control the TV, this device, but I'm not sure if I will be overall automating everything with it. On the other hand, if I move this device and I will probably move it, either this device or the SwitchBot infrared hub to my summer home, there I will definitely be using that device much more. Do you need this device for a device that costs between 13 and 16 euros? I don't think that you will go wrong. On the other hand, if you are using ZHA, well, there is an issue with ZHA. Currently, I haven't found a way how you can integrate it inside Home Assistant via ZHA and send those custom commands. Hopefully, if enough people nudge the devs, there will be a workaround for this one. Until then, you are stuck with Zigbee to MQTT. And in my opinion, that's not bad. For me, it's even better. So overall, I'm pretty happy with, once again, 15 euros investment in this device. The link to it will be, as always, down in the video description. If you did find this video useful, if you do like that device, drop me a line down in the comment section below. And don't forget to give this video a like, because it not just means a lot to me, and it really does each and every like you make on the video, but it also helps YouTube algorithms. If you like and comment on the video, YouTube will recommend this video to the others, so others may see it too. So your activity on the video is really, really appreciated. But before I wrap up, I must also thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. As I've mentioned previously, some of you have been with me for longer than three years, and I must thank you for that. But also I must thank each and every one of you who watches, likes, subscribes, and of course comments on my videos. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month, or go to my merchandise store and get something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have